Live from the Civic Media World Headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin, it's the Todd Alba Show. And now, pursuing truth wherever it may lead, here's your host, Todd Alba. Across Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network and streaming worldwide on the Civic Media app. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Todd Alba with our outstanding producer, Mr. Aaron Zommers, on the board. It is six minutes now past the hour of 12 noon on this Monday, February 19th, 2024. It is President's Day. Welcome back for another work week and back to school. Well, for some, maybe having the day off because of President's Day. I know banks are closed. Um, some other financial institutions, government offices, those sort of things. Mr. Zimmer's growing up, did you ever get President's Day off for school? I feel like it has happened before. I, I can definitely remember times in elementary school where we had mm. President's Day and we were there because I remember doing like basically effectively cut out coloring books oh, about sure. the different most famous presidents like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and such. Uh -huh. But I feel like I have had it off before at some point. I don't know. My favorite president of all time, Grover Cleveland. Because I like to call back in grade school, I'd call him Super Grover Cleveland. <laughs> there we go. Yep. You got to love Super, Super Grover. Grover! Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my bad Grover impersonation from Sesame Street. I think everyone got it, though. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Uh, no, my, my favorite president of all time, the, the late, great President Abraham Lincoln. I mean, you can't get better than that, right? I mean, I've said this before, but I went down a number of years ago uh, to Springfield, Illinois. And if you have ever get a chance to go down there and they have a great presidential library museum in Springfield for Abraham Lincoln, some interactive activities, that sort of thing. Really, really well done. I really encourage it. So. I'd like to check it out at some point. Yeah, absolutely. But no, they, uh, they were taking there were a lot of people out the day off because they combined Lincoln and whose birthday was the 12th and Washington, which I think is like the 22nd or something like that. And then they say the first Monday and whatever, the third week is president's day. I guess supporting or all, all presidents, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Honestly, <laughs> we did our research today. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the throw. I have so many. And normally I'm a big, as people know, I love my beverages. I've got water. I've got lemon uh, honey water and I've got coffee. And for some reason, all of them are interacting with my voice today. Weird. My burping. And I apologize for the way my voice sounds today. I'll try to take care of it and sound better tomorrow. Um, by the way, we are kind of sort of off ourselves today with full disclosure here. We are recording this show or we did record this show on Saturday. And so there are no phone calls today, regret to inform you, but I'm taking the day off, helping out dad having his second cataract surgery today. So helping out with that up in Shano. And then tomorrow we'll be live with a brand new show from the beautiful plush studios in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And uh, then from there, we go up to uh, Hayward and we're going to do our show from Hayward on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week, covering the 50th annual American Birkenbeiner ski race. So yeah, Todd's taking another tour. Technically, it is still winter. <laughs> yes. It's a, and a lot of people say, well, Todd, well, how are they going to ski? There's no snow. Well, thank you for so very much for asking. They have been making snow, not just in Cable and Hayward, but I think for like an hour or two hour radius, different places that have snow making equipment. And then they're piling it into dump, dump trucks and they're they're heading into to Cable. So the... The plan for this week is normally the race would go from Cable to Hayward, Wisconsin, 20-some kilometers. And it finishes right downtown Hayward. But because of the, the weather, the El Nino, what they're doing is they're trucking in snow and they're making a 10-mile, or pardon me, 10-kilometer loop in Cable. So the race will happen in Cable about 20 miles away from Hayward. But we're going to broadcast from our WBZH studios in beautiful downtown Hayward. The buzz of the north. Very good. And I will be staying on an air mattress. <laughs> That's the, it turns out all the hotel rooms are booked. And I'd say, well, look, if there's a if there's a nice, you know, single Danish guy, I'd be happy to share a hotel with him. But there were no takers, you understand. And so and so I'll be sleeping in the WBZH studios. Country girls make do. <laughs> so, but you know, 
you God forbid there's any sort of an emergency, I'll be right there ready to go. Hop on the mic and provide you with the latest information from beautiful Hayward. But it'll be great. There are very nice little studios there in downtown Hayward, and I'll be very comfortable. The, there's a, there's a, the reason I can do this is they have a shower in the, in the Hayward studios. Very nice. So now we've got that in a couple of our studios. Yes, Green now. Bay and Hayward both have showers in the studios. So no excuse for Todd not be able to go there. <laughs> looking forward to that. Looking forward to today bringing you some new content throughout the day as well. Going to be talking. We started this on Friday and didn't have time to finish it because of the breaking news that Donald Trump was fined $355 million dollars um, you know, Cain and Abel, I mean, Don Jr. and Eric, they were fined $4 million a piece, and the Trumpster was banned from doing business in New York for three years. So we had that special report on, on Friday, and so we didn't get a chance to go through all of this, so we're going to kind of get through it today. Very interesting. When was the last time that you went all day without a cell phone? <laughs> Somebody called in last week and said probably the day before I got my first cell phone. I asked some of my family and friends yeah. uh, over the weekend. Uh, my youngest sister says, uh, like, never. I don't know. I mean, I've had days when I don't use it much, like when I have a migraine. <laughs> right. How old is she? She is 21. Well, sure. I mean, yeah. Basically born with a cell phone. Pretty much. Uh, my dad said... um, this year, actually, not too long, or I guess, really? I guess 2023, yeah. he says, my phone died up north the day before Thanksgiving, and I basically didn't have a phone until I came back that Friday or Saturday. So he went a couple days wow. without his phone because he that, had to. That's impressive, yeah. My oldest sister uh, says she went a whole summer without her phone, but that was in 2009. Oh. So <laughs> a little while ago. <laughs> it's been a minute, as the kids say. Do they still say that? It's been a minute? Yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> and yes, uh, and basically other answers that I've gotten from friends involved, like, oh, I went on, I went on a backpacking uh -huh. hike for a few days or whatever. So they had a few days off, but, I, or one of my friends is a Marine and with drill, sometimes oh, he just sure. didn't have his phone. So basically it was always a specific choice to do so. Yeah. It, it was never just, oh, I didn't use my phone today. Learned some very interesting stats in this story. We're going to share them with you a little bit later this show. When was the last time that you went without your cell phone for a day? And also give you some cool, helpful hints if you want to use your cell phone less. Some of them are pretty darn good. So we'll be taking a look at that as well. Want to start off, though, the show today with a story over the weekend. And again, we talked about this briefly on Friday, that all of these not all these, but these the charges, these big charges from Republicans against Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, saying they'd taken bribes from Ukrainian officials and Burisma, caused a lot of anguish. A lot of people, a lot of people talked about this. Came out last week, late Friday, after a Department of Justice investigation, the whole thing was made up. Untrue, as it turned out. What? Surprise, surprise. surprise. Great story from our friends at MediaMatters.org. Headline, Fox News hyped a flimsy report that made dubious claims about Joe Biden. The FBI just arrested the informant who falsified the information. For months, Fox hosts and congressional Republicans have relentlessly pushed the incredibly dubious and unproven claim that then Vice President Joe Biden was bribed by Ukraine during the Obama administration. The information, the, pardon me, the informant, who is the sole origin of these claims, just in, uh, indicted for lying to the FBI. After news broke earlier in the day, none of Fox primetime hosts even mentioned the indictment. Again, surprise, surprise. This is from a tweet, by the way, from Brian St uh, Stelter, an entertainment reporter, he tweeted out last week, Fox's talk shows have been obsessed with the allegation of a quote-unquote Biden bribe. Now, the so-called informant has been arrested and charged with lying. The number of times this bombshell was mentioned by Laura Ingram 
Jesse Waters, and Sean Hannity tonight? Zero. Zero. Which shocks me, zero (laughs) percent. Right? I've said this on this program before. I don't believe in a singular news source for anyone, including myself. And people who want to rely on Fox, who, by the way, I keep reminding people, there is a disclaimer that you can barely read at the bottom of many of their shows, Hannity included, that says this is an entertainment program. They don't, they don't even, under deposition with the whole voting scandal stuff, they admitted that they're really not a news organization. They are entertainment for the most part. And that's fine if they want to be that. But people who rely on them for actual news, this is the problem. That when the truth comes out, they're not going to report it, especially when it doesn't behoove them. Article goes on from Media Matters. Fox News spent years spreading allegations that Biden was involved in corrupt practices in Ukraine in a baseless smear campaign against the president and his family. The resulting investigation led by House Republicans have been futile despite the constant promise of a smoking gun. How many times have we heard that? Well, we've got we've got evidence that's gonna come out. We're gonna a smoking gun. No. Well, well, we think it happens. Right, we think. Trump's personal attempt to get involved led to his first impeachment, if you remember that. Fox News' research arm, the so-called brain room, at the time made clear this was a right-wing disinformation campaign. The latest Republican theory to collapse centers on a partial copy of an FD-1023. That's a summary document within an FBI interview with a confidential informant, which Senator Chuck Grassley circulated in 2023. Document says the informant claimed Biden accepted bribes from the Ukraine energy company Burisma, while his son Hunter Biden was serving on the board of the company. That's what it claimed. As it turns out, we found out late last week, none of it is true. Come back, discuss it more. Don't go anywhere. It is a pre-recorded Monday on the Todd Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. was me too, only I was very far away, which is very fortunate, as today I am talking to you all about the letter F. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> that is why I have the letter F on my chest here. See? Welcome back yes. to the Town Hall Ball Show Usually on I the have. Civic Media Ready Network. It is now 20 past the hour of 12 noon on Monday, the 19th of February, 2024, President's Day. I was saying in the opening part of the show, my favorite president was Grover Cleveland because of Super Grover. Not true, but just any chance to talk about. So there was a cut from actually Super Grover on Sesame Street. Yeah. And normally he has a G on his chest for for Grover. Yes. But he had an F in this one because, you know, he's got to tell you about the letters. And (laughs) F is for flying. So uh, in this bit, Super Grover attempts to fly. He attempts. Well, that, that, that doesn't work out too well. I mean, it tends not to. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Glad to have you along with Mr. Somers on the board. No phone calls today, unfortunately. I uh, I am not here in person on a Monday. Mr. Somers and I pre-recorded this over the weekend so that we can bring you some new content. But uh, taking the day off, do a little uh, uh, health care help for uh, for Dad today. Everything is all right. Just a little cataract surgery. But anyway, glad to uh, have you along with us on a Monday. We'll be back with a brand new live show tomorrow. On Tuesday, we're going to be live from beautiful Chippewa Falls tomorrow. We'll see what uh, see what fun and excitement we can bring you from Chippewa Falls. Pat Kreitlow on vacation, so we won't be able to bring you any Kreitlow tomorrow. Maybe you can break into his house and broadcast live from there. <laughs> and you just you just sit in his normal spot for Up North News Radio and don't address it. <laughs> 
uh, that this is a joke. We're not breaking up Pat's <laughs> no, house. This is absolutely a joke. I don't even know where Pat lives. Me and, now, and now I'm sure I'll never know. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, before the break, you're talking about this story from Midas Matters or MediaMatters.org. Talking about the fact that Fox News spread this, now we know it to be a lie about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the whole Burisma thing, a lie, according to the United States Justice Department. And saying here, this all kind of centered on this called FD 1023. It was a summary document from an FBI interview from a confidential informant. Republican Congressman Chuck Grassley from Iowa circulated it widely in 2023. On February 15th of this year, authorities arrested that same uh, informant, Alexander Smirnoff. Now, I don't know whether he is the same Smirnoff that makes the great vodka or not, but he's... His last name is Smirnoff, Alexander Smirnoff, and the guy, as it turns out, was in Vegas. Now, I don't know if he was there for the Super Bowl or what, but he was hanging out in Las Vegas, and the authorities charged him with lying to the Bureau about Hunter and Joe Biden. The indictment alleges that Smirnoff falsely told the FBI that Burisma officials told him they hired Hunter Biden to, quote, protect us through his dad, from all kinds of problems, unquote. Shmurdoff also allegedly lied to the FBI that Burisma officials had confirmed Joe Biden accepted $5 million in bribes for the company, again, proven completely untrue. The contents of the FD-1023 form were never verified. Let me say, it, say that again. These This fd 1023 that was circulated by Chuck Grassley and other Republicans defaming Joe Biden and Hunter Biden were never verified. But that, that did not stop Fox News from whipping up hysteria around the baseless allegations and decrying the alleged scandal. Host Sean Hannity alone, get this, aired 85 segments promoting the claim. 85, including 28 monologues. The Washington Post, Philip Bump, estimates that Fox News mentioned the claim about 2,600 times in the last 12 months. 2,600 times in the last 12 months. I'm not surprised. I mean, you have stuff like, here's a little clip that I saved uh, maybe a year or so ago from Mm -hmm. Representative James Comer, just because it was so representative of every talking point the GOP had at the time. Sure. If we can keep it about Hunter Biden, that would be great. (laughs) Right. They were talking about something else entirely, if I recall. (laughs) And then he was like, yeah, yes, but Hunter Biden's laptop. Right. Kept going back to that time and time again. I just did a little quick math, by the way. It turns out that Fox News mentioned this false claim 260, uh, pardon me, 216 times on average a month. Divide that by 30. That means seven times a day for a year. Seven times a day for a year over a major cable news channel. That'll happen when they have nothing else to talk about. That, but also just the fact that talk about burning a message, right? No wonder people go around with misinformation all the time. When it's being fed to them seven times a day for a year, a lie. Just a few examples to show how Fox personalities went with unsubstantiated claims, which was also, by the way, not limited to Fox News. Here's one Fox News Jesse Waters cited an allegation that Joe Biden accepted $5 million in bribes from a foreign national to justify his claim that, as vice president, Biden was working as an intelligent op for the FBI. Waters then claimed the FBI was caught up in a cover-up, and it went from there. 
All of this untrue. Proven now, untrue. Here's another one. Fox and Friends weekend host, Will Kane, claimed the form demonstrated, quote, what we have suspected, unquote, and that Joe Biden's family benefited from a pay-to-play scheme, unquote. All of it, now we know, untrue. I mean, just time, I mean, endless, right? Seven times a day for a year, I mean, just pick any day, basically, on Fox News. After detailing the allegations in the, quote, long-awaited FBI FD 1023 form, unquote, Fox host Sean Hannity declared, quote, it's time for a real special counsel, a real criminal investigation to take place to investigate what is rampant corruption, unquote. He went on to claim, quote, we now have what is a trove of credible evidence that Joe Biden used the power of his office as the vice president of this country to secure massive amounts of money for his own family, unquote. Now we know all of it untrue and uh as they say every accusation is a confession (laughs) because uh as we just saw with donald trump being now held liable for fraud and on the line for over 350 million dollars maybe he's the one we should have been looking at (laughs) maybe as it turns out this is what's wrong one of the things is wrong with politics today the proliferation of completely false information there is no news in fox well maybe they're polling people but other than that not much at all back with more on the other side it's the title ball show for a monday president's day on the civic media radio network Taliban show on a Monday, February 19th, 2024. Now 34 minutes past the hour of 12 noon. Glad to have you along on Monday, President's Day. Mr. Zomers on the board. We are pre-recorded today. Back with an all new live show tomorrow. Taking your phone calls. Putting a button on this story that came through over the weekend from Media Matters for America. Following up on the bombshell information on Friday. That all of this talk about Burisma and the Bidens taking bribes, this form that was circulated by Chuck Grassley, and we did the math here, according to Media Matters, and I believe it was the Washington Post, this stuff has been debunked. And it turns out that Fox News spread this lie seven times a day for a year. And we gave you some of these examples before the break. Here's another one. Fox News anchor Martha McCollum agreed with guest Clay Travis. There is a brain trust for you. Part of right-wing talk radio. Clay Travis, he argued Trump had been, quote, held more accountable for allegations of criminal behavior than Joe Biden. I mean, that is just crazy. Travis then claimed that, quote, these allegations against Joe Biden make Watergate seem like jaywalking, unquote, referring to the Watergate charges against former President Richard Nixon. Clay Travis was 100% wrong. Again, according to the Justice Department late last week, they arrested this guy Schmirtoff from in uh, Las Vegas, Because everything that he had testified, the key linchpin in the Republicans' entire charges against Joe Biden and Hunter Biden over Burisma is false. The guy made them up. He lied. There's not a single thing true according to an in-depth investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice. And yet people tune into this goofball Clay Travis's show on the radio has big following. Big following. 
all over the country. This is why I am so proud to work for civic media. And again, I'm not saying we all, even on this show, right? There's been times over the last year and a half where I've said, you know what? I, I, I had that. I had that detail wrong yesterday. I apologize. I want to correct it. We move on. The entire moniker is pursuing truth wherever it may lead. And sometimes it leads to places that we don't particularly like. I would much rather work for a company like this that allows that kind of thinking than, oh, let's just go with a story that gets us the most clicks. Even though we know it's a complete lie. The bottom line here in this story, for me at least, don't get all your news from one source, including us. Listen to, read, watch several different news sources. And by that, I don't mean places like OWN and Newsmax, even Fox News. But hey, I get it. A lot of people watch Fox News. But at least spend 10, 15 minutes watching CNN or ABC or CBS or or, BBC or BBC or Civic Media or the Washington Post, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the Wisconsin State Journal, papers in Green Bay and Wausau, independent papers, Amory Free Press over in Amory. Because as we saw in Russia last week with Vladimir Putin, if you get a dictatorial leader, they will suppress free speech and it will become state media. Trump has said as much. If he gets another term, that's where we're going. He has said openly he's going to pull FCC licenses from places like NBC. All right, not not some left-wing group, one of the oldest broadcasting companies in America, NBC. Trump wants to shut it down should he get another term. And people say, oh, he's just talking. He's just, you know, he just says a lot of things. Really? Really? People like Trigby Olson, who are on this show every Wednesday, Trigvi, of course, has worked with a lot of people all over the world, gone up against people like Putin, like the Belarusians. And he has told us that based on his world experience, dictators, authoritarians, they'll tell you exactly what they're going to do. It has to do with the psychology or the psychosis. They're so sure of themselves, they don't care whether they're intimidating. They they don't care that they're telling people, look, I'm going to stomp all over you. They'll just do it. And then they actually do when they get in power. When Trump says, I'll only be a dictator, well, only on day one. He is telegraphing that. When he says to Vladimir Putin, look, I'll I'll say to the Russians, do whatever the hell you want. Oh, and by the way, a couple of days later, The Russians killed the opposition leader there. Coincidence? I think not. So make sure that you're actually garnering a lot of different opinions. You're watching different news sources. You're getting the truth because there are places out there like Fox, like OWN, like Newsmax, who have a strict political agenda and it's all about the clicks it's all about the clicks glad to have you along with us on a monday again we are pre-recorded today so no no uh, phone calls today but we'll be back with all new live show tomorrow want to start something here we'll probably continue it into the next hour but this great article that we talked about on Friday a little bit, and we had the breaking news on Trump. Judge finding that he had to pay $355 million-ish to the state of New York. Cain and Abel, 
Don Jr. and Eric had to pay $4 million apiece. Barred from doing business, business in New York for three years. Unfortunately, only three. Well, so it's a start. But this, we want to get to this rest of the story today. That when was the last time that you went all day without using your cell phone? Our crack staff here asks, ever had the feeling that use of an app might qualify as an addiction? An app, an application on your phone. Could be a dating app, could be uh, a news app, could be a social media app. It could hypothetically, purely hypothetically, uh, be YouTube. <laughs> purely hypothetically, Mr. Sommers says with some irony in his voice. <laughs> well, you can stop wondering. Uh, yes, it is, and you are addicted. That's the case made by researchers Annie Margaret and Nicholas Hunkins in their article published last week by The Conversation. That's the uh, the case that they're making here is that you should, by checking your phone all the time, it's kind of what used to be considered a smoke break. You know, smoke them if you got them, five minutes. Now, every time you have an open minute during the day, you want to check your phone, myself included. Purveyors of online apps manipulate your brain with algorithms, as it turns out, rewards, and even simple, uh, try that again, Todd, and even simple sounds. They've about perfected how to trigger dopamine, the surges in your brain. Dopamine is the brain's reward center. It's a high. Same as gambling, same as drugs. It keeps you coming back again and again. Of course, online technologies offer many benefits. The problem is, when internet overcompensation becomes dis destructive. Too much online compensation can hurt your mental and physical health. It can rob time, time for your life, the lives of your, lo of your loved ones, An online presence cannot replace your in-person presence. That's a, that's a big one, I think, right there. Mr. Zombers, I've talked about, about it before. I think maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, your generation, you're in your mid-20s, early 20s, I think some people, and maybe this is partly because of the pandemic and COVID and so much online learning. I know people of your generation who are more comfortable and open snapping or texting or chatting online than they are face-to-face -face in person. Absolutely. I think that because we grew up with it and then because of the pandemic, that only exacerbated it. People younger than I am, like COVID kids, as mm -hmm. I call them even if they're not that much younger than I am right. where they really had very limited social experience before the pandemic hit and then they're just stuck in their house all day it's kind of tragic really it is and it is I think it's confusing you know I'm in my 50s confusing for people my age even younger who is like you know just pick up the phone talk to each other <laughs> you know let's and 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 there are people of a you know the younger generation who as Mr. Zomer said because they grew up with it went through a couple years of school, essentially online. It's completely changed the psyche of many Americans, how we communicate with each other. But this article pointed out that in-person presence cannot be replaced by online presence. And so, yes, Mark Zuckerberg, creator of Facebook, oh, I'm sorry, Meta, Google and others can manipulate your internet compensation level simply by the noises the clicks the dings all that people get obsessed right i think i think it's more of a younger generation but people put things out on social media and then it's like a competition to see well how many likes did you get i put it out there like nobody liked it and they get they get like i'm not making this up seriously depressed because nobody's liking something in a social virtual world yeah, that's something like that's something I used to make fun of when I was in like middle school and high school. And I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, these people going out for likes again or whatever. Like nobody cares. It's just okay. like do it for yourself, not for all these likes. And I realize now that it's not that simple. Uh, just like a lot of mental health things, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and a condition that it's hard to escape on your own. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there are. And so I think what happens is, from what I know, what I've read, what I've heard, 
is that particularly it seems like more girls, but you know, some guys, teenagers, they'll put such stuff out on social media and then they'll brag in person to their friend group or whomever at school. Yeah. You know, I got, you know, 800 likes off my post last night. I'm over a thousand likes. And then, and then somebody says, well, I put something out there and it got like five likes. And, and then they make fun of that person. You got five likes. Who are you? You're nothing. I mean, this kind of stuff really happens. And yeah, we can laugh about it. And there's certainly a, a certain amount of humor to that. But there's also this very serious mental health issue for young people, young young girls, young teenagers in particular, who take that devastatingly hard. And, and, and it affects them. So that's the bad news that, yes, we are addicted, almost all of us, in some way, shape, or form, to our devices. But there is good news, how we can take back control. Going to start this and finish it on the other side. Start by reflecting on your current internet and social media use. For example, are you spending too much time mindlessly scrolling? Well, I, I call it doom scrolling. What is it? That's correct. Yeah, doom, doom scrolling. Yeah, doom sc scrolling. Death scrolling, doom scrolling. Where you, I, I found this this morning, actually. I, I, I Something on Facebook popped up, and I just went to check it quick. 20 minutes later, I'm, I'm scrolling through my stupid Facebook feed, watching some reel about rhinoceroses going by a lion's. <laughs> Why am I watching that? Watching, watching baby chicks having a face-off with a baby. Why am I watching that? Weird animal stuff gets people. Weird animal stuff gets people. And apparently it got me. So how can we take back control of our lives from our cell phones and other devices? We'll tell you more on the other side. Don't go anywhere. It is the Town Hall Ball Show for a Monday, President's Day, February 19th. Mr. Zomers, I'm Mr. Allball. Stay with us. Hour 2 is next on the Civic Media Radio Network. Banana phone. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. I've got this feeling so appealing for us to get together and sing, sing. Ring, ring, Welcome ring, back ring, to the Tallow Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Phone. That was a very quick top of the hour break. Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. <laughs> we are pre recorded on this Monday. February 19th, 2024. And so we're not doing it quite to the, you know, I'm looking at the actual clock and it doesn't match up with our show clock because we're pre-recording on the weekend for today for Monday. And so I said, we're going to the top of the hour and we got done. And Mr. Zomer says, uh, we got one more segment this hour. I said, well, there you go. But nonetheless, it was a great opportunity to bring you one of our favorite songs, Banana Phone. Absolutely. I, I was waiting for it. You know, we were talking about phones. <laughs> right? It was going to come up. Uh, so we are talking about phones, talking about how we can take back control because these devices, as it turns out, and I, I saw, I forget where it was, 60 Minutes or something a while back that was talking about uh, all the psych psychology that goes into th this development, how they've tested meticulously the tone and the types of rings and little bleeps and stuff like when someone likes someone or whatever or snapchat or whatever like they've, they've meticulously tested and found out here's what it was the bottom line was they match the psychology to what happens in a casino oh yeah yeah to what happens on our cell phones and our apps I mean, the whole thing, get that, this is real, this is real. I'm not making this up at all. So you go onto your uh, Twitter account, well, Twix or whatever you want to call it now, Twitter account, right? So here I am, I just pulled it up. Now, to refresh my page, get to latest stories, what do I have to do? I have to pull down, right? I have to pull down. And when you pull down, then it refreshes your screen. What does that pulling down remind you of? Especially on, you know, on Twitter, you know, it's it's one line yeah. in a slot machine. 
Exactly what it is. They actually that they they matched that up, and when they created Twitter, one of the the engineers that created Twitter, it was intentional that the pull down the the swipe down was like pulling a lever on a slot machine. And now everything does that. Yeah, I I didn't know that's where that came from, yeah. but I'm not surprised. I thought it was just like an ergonomic thing, but nope. I mean, I guess it's so lucrative to make everything appealing. Well, let's see if I can turn on my my sound on my phone. Um, so let's do it here. I'll, I'll scroll down. Listen. Hang on. Well, now of course it's not doing it. But if you, if I have my volume, my phone, it makes that tsh, tsh, when you when you scroll down on Twitter. So that that sound combined with the combined with the the pull is like pulling a lever, a slot, a slot machine. And that now, of course, in most uh, casinos, modern casinos, you just punch a button, which I think is a terrible disservice to casinos. I'm not a big gambling or casino guy, but on the rare occasion I go to a casino, what do I want? I want to play slots. I want to pull levers. It's all touch screens. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to just sit there and push a button. No fun at all at that. But anyway, that's the type of meticulous research people have done on these apps, on these devices. So how can we kind of take back control? As we said before, start by reflecting on our current internet and social media use. For example, as we said, are you spending too much time mindlessly scrolling? There are times when I can say, honestly, yes, I have. Here's one. Do you sleep with your phone always within reach? This one we talked about with yeah. some listeners, and that one might be a little bit less indicative. Right. If you have an emergency or you have a sick family member, you might want to keep track of your family or friends or whatever. But yes, I, I it, do. It's more excusable for that, I think. Yeah. Next, set goals for the changes you want to make. Here, these are very good. Here are a few examples. Number one, set a timer for when you'll set the phone down. So say, okay, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, when that goes off, I'm going to set the phone down and do something productive. All right, that's number one. Number two, turn off notifications. So in other words, when new information comes or whatever, it's not going to bing, bing or ding or whatever. All right. Uh, next one, unfollow certain accounts. Are there certain accounts that tend to draw you in? I'm just trying to think about that. I mean, again... I, I'm totally making excuses, but because of our industry and our jobs, knowing if breaking news is happening or whatever it is, that's like essential to what I do. Yeah. For for me, it's a little bit more for you. I think that's a pretty legitimate reason, mm -hmm. not necessarily an excuse, but an explanation, you know, but for me, it's absolutely an excuse because yes, I'm following news stuff, but that's not what draws me in. It's all of the... This is going to shock you. All of the board game and card game related <laughs> things that I follow. Um, and then I go on and I'm like, yep, I'm just checking the news. I am not just checking the news. And I can say, oh, it's for my board game of the week. I'm looking at that. And I'm like, well, right. do I really need to spend that much time on something I do once a week? No. <laughs> but you do it anyway. I'm lying to myself. <laughs> but this is the first step, of course, is admitting the truth. That's true. <laughs> Pursuing the uh, truth, even if it leads to... <laughs> this <laughs> inconvenience here's another one uh delete or limit apps are there apps on our phones that just we don't need them I, I, i'm probably gonna say yes i would say i mean i probably have like old airline apps or whatever that i don't use anymore really i, I might get like a notification from them or for whatever reason but yeah there, there are certainly apps that i could delete also and this would be hard. This kind, of, this kind of goes back to sleeping with your phone within reach. Sleep with the phone in another room where you can't hear it. All right. Again, when you have parents or other people you are concerned about, I'm not right. sure whether you want to do that or not. I think that one really depends on the individual. Yeah. I think so, too. Talk about this. We really are going to talk about it on the other side of the hour because the, uh, the one o'clock news hour is coming up here. Next, keep a journal for four weeks of how well you do on your goals. That would really keep me accountable. If I could find the time or take the time to write a journal, <laughs> that would be very interesting. If I can offer my own tip on that one, yeah. don't do it on your notes app. 
Do it on a notepad. <laughs> yes, yes. Paper and pencil. Love it. I absolutely love it. And you're absolutely right, Mr. Summers. All right, we really are breaking from the top of the hour news. Now news, weather, and sports. We'll come back on the other side with a little bit more information on how we can take back control of our devices, our phones, our iPads, whatever. Don't go to where's the Tom Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Banana, banana phone. Ring, ring, ring.